This video will show you how to solve a quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula. An equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero is called a quadratic equation. That should look familiar because we have several methods for solving them, including factoring, taking the square root method, or completing the square. The quadratic formula is this big monster. And it's going to be another method for solving a quadratic equation. Now there's a similarity in the terms. Quadratic equation is this. Quadratic formula is used to solve a quadratic equation. Not every quadratic can be factored. Completing the square sometimes can be a pain in the neck. The quadratic formula, however, will always work on an equation that has x squared in it. You do need to memorize this formula. Where the quadratic formula comes from is actually from completing the square, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. Let's take a look at an example. Here's a quadratic equation. It's in our standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. I suggest you make a little list. a is 3, that's the coefficient in front of x squared. b is negative 10, that's the coefficient in front of x. And c is 5. Here's our formula written again. All we've got to do is plug these numbers in for a, b, and c. And that's what this looks like. This is negative of b, which is negative 10. Here's something very important. Because we are raising a negative to a second power, you need to put that value in parentheses to be sure you get the right sign. Minus 4 times 3, which was your a value, times 5, which was your c value, over 2 times a. Now, all of this can be typed into your calculator exactly the way you see it. So you may want to do that rather than the steps I'm going to show you arithmetic-wise. Don't enter the square root part in your calculator, however, because if the square root does not come out even, that's going to give you a decimal answer, which is not the kind of answer we're looking for. But you can put this part in to your calculator as is. I went ahead and wrote out the work, though, in case you didn't have a calculator. Negative of negative 10 makes positive 10. Negative 10 squared is a positive 100 minus 4 times 3 times 5 is 60. Do the arithmetic under the square root gives you 40. This is the square root of 40. 40 is not a perfect square, but you can do a factor tree on that. This is 40 factor treat out. You have a pair of 2's. That's why there's a 2 coming out. You have a 2 times a 5 staying in. That's why you have a 10 in. Oftentimes on this step you are finished. However, notice there is a common factor between those three factors. I call this the triangle trick. If there is a common factor between that, that, and that, you may divide all three of those by the common factor. The common factor is 2. 2 goes into 10 5 times. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 3 times. The radical stays radical 10. So that gives you this answer, 5 plus or minus the square root of 10 over 3. There are two answers, 5 plus radical 10 over 3 and 5 minus radical 10 over 3. We're getting two answers because this was x squared. In this example, a equals 2, b equals negative 3, c equals negative 1. We're going to plug those in for a, b, and c, and this is what we have negative of b, b is negative 3, that's our b value, then this is a b value also in parentheses squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 1, all over 2 times 2. This arithmetic right here can all be done on your calculator if you want, but I've done it out here stepwise. Negative 3 in parentheses squared is positive 9, negative 4 times 2 times negative 1 is a positive 8, which is going to give us this answer. There's nothing we can do with the square root of 17. There's no common factors I can take, so this is my solution. Another example, here's our a is 3, b is negative 11, c is negative 4. Plug those in, and we have negative of negative 11, which is how I get positive 11 in the front. This is negative 11 quantity squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 4. That's 11. Negative 11 squared is 121. Negative 4 times 3 times negative 4. Remember, all of this can be done straight on your calculator if you want. Add this up, gives us the square root of 169. If you had done all of the work by your calculator, you would have gone straight to this 169 right here. In this case, the square root of 169 is a perfect square. So we have 11 plus or minus 13 over 6. We've got the plus or minus to break up. It's the high road and low road. 11 plus 13 over 6 gives me 24 over 6, which is 4. Take the low road, which is using the minus, 11 minus 13 over 6 gives us negative 2 over 6, which is a negative 1 third. So sometimes using the quadratic formula, we end up with rational answers. 
this one. A is 4, B is 20, C equals 25. Plug those in and we have this. Plug all that into your calculator if you want. Here's the arithmetic worked out. 20 squared is 400. Multiply all this together is 400 also. So 400 minus 400 is 0 here. So that the square root part just goes away. This is negative 20 plus or minus 0. So that drops off. All we're looking at is negative 20 over 8, which reduces to negative 5 halves. Now it's worth saying something, and that is we've been saying x squared should have two solutions. It looks like we only have one solution. But what we really have is this is a solution twice. If we had factored this equation, this would have factored into 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5, and that would have given us a solution of negative 5 halves twice. So we really do have our two solutions. When we say there's two solutions, nobody said they had to be two different numbers. Plug these numbers in, a, b, and c. You will have this as your first step. Clean up the inside there. Negative 3 plus or minus 3 squared is 9. 4 times 2 times 5 is a negative 40, all over 4. 9 minus 40 is negative 31, so you're looking at the square root of a negative, and you should recall that that's going to bring an i out of the problem. Square root of 31 does not simplify any, so we are finished with these solutions right here. Sometimes the equation starts out looking like this, and here's a rule. The equation should be in standard form, which means equal to zero, before you start the quadratic formula. So we just need to do some basic manipulating. Subtract 4x and add 5 to both sides, which gives us this. Besides it being equal to zero, we would like this in descending order of exponents so that you name your a, b, and c correctly. a is 2, b is negative 4, c is 5. Here's your formula and I've already plugged things in. I've put negative of negative 4. That's how this is turned into positive 4. I have my b, which is negative 4, quantity squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 5, all over 2 times a. Clean up inside the radical. Negative 4 squared is 16. 4 times 2 times 5 is 40. 16 minus 40 is a negative 24. Two things here, because it's the square root of a negative, that means there's an i that's going to come out. Also, we need to do a factor tree on the 24. Here's your factors. I have a pair of 2's. So what the square root of negative 24 simplifies into is 2i times the square root of 6. Notice our little triangle arrangement here. There is a common factor of 2 among all three of those. 2 into 4 is 2. 2 into 2 is 1. And 2 into that 4 is 2, which gives me this as the final answer. This next problem will show you that sometimes you have to combine factoring and the quadratic formula to solve a problem. This is a cubic equation because it's x to the third power. What we have to do is factor out a greatest common factor on this to begin with. And the GCF is 2x. We take a 2x out of all of this, we have x squared minus 7x plus 5. This is a quadratic. This we can use the zero products property on. If this times this equals zero, then either 2x equals 0, or this part equals 0. This is totally solvable. All we have to do is divide both sides by 2, and we're going to have an answer for x. This is a quadratic equation. It doesn't factor any further. The only thing we're going to be able to do with this is use the quadratic formula on that. So here's our answer of x equals 0. That's just one of our solutions. Now we have to use the quadratic formula on this remaining equation. The a, b, and c values you use are on this equation, the x squared equation, not the x cubed equation. So x squared has a coefficient of 1. That's why a is 1, b is negative 7, c is 5. So let's plug those numbers into the equation, and this is what we get. We have negative of negative 7, because b was a negative 7. Negative 7 squared, that was our b, minus 4, times a, which is 1, times c, which is 5, all over 2 times a, which is 1. Clean this up, we get a positive 7, negative 7 squared is 49, 4 times 5 times 1 is 20, finish out the arithmetic and we get this. Now we have these two answers and we have this answer we found earlier for a total of three solutions and that's our x cubed which verifies we have found the right number of solutions.